What up, what up, what up? Welcome back to Pinoy News. So, I was thinking about something here a minute ago. All right, actually, I read, a, I read an article earlier, which we're going to, you know I mean, address that as well, right? But I want to kind of lead into it a little bit, right? So, I have two vehicles, right? I have a backup vehicle, which I've been driving for about a year, right? And I have another vehicle that just constantly costs me fucking money, just all the time, right? Now, back in, fuck, 2013, 2014, I bought a car, right, when I first started driving truck, right, with, you know what I mean, when I first had my income go up, I was like, you know what, man, listen, you know, I, I'll take it back further than that. When I was married in the 2000s, I had a bunch of cars. But in particular, I had an El Camino and an 86 Chevy K10. And I had a 92 Chevy Silverado, right? I go, I'm like, what do you need all these vehicles for? I've spent my life giving up relationship after relationship after relationship, whether it be with family or friends or females, kids, whatever the case is, right? As I've had to walk away because shit just got too fucking thick. And I was like, you know what? It's just not worth squabbling for. Really, to be honest, in I went to custody court in the early 2000s. And it was the most brutal thing I ever went through in my whole life. And in the end of it, I found out there was just no point in even fucking trying. Right? There's no point in even fighting. Right? Because you're losing anyway. Right? And the trick is, is like, you have to have like millions of dollars to stack onto a thing. And even then, nothing is as it seems, right? Nothing, you're not, you're not really winning. You're just not losing, <laughs> right? Like a win in family court is literally just like, you going, I didn't get raped. Yay. <laughs> right? You know what I'm saying? Like that's a win. And ultimately you're fighting against somebody who you loved, right? So, you know. You're fighting against somebody who you care about deeply, right? And having to walk away from them and being forced away from your children and all these things, right? And we all fill these voids with stuff. Whether it be like these old people in hoarding, right? Whether it be, you know what I'm saying, guys who stand here and stack up a whole bunch of calls in their front yard, right? You know what I mean? This was what my yard would look like if, you know what I mean, I had a lot of land. <laughs> I'll be honest with you. You know what I'm saying? If I would have handed a bunch of land when I was 18, this is what my land probably would have ended up looking like, right? I'd have had calls everywhere, right? But ultimately, like, the reason why you're going through all this shit, right, as a whole, is because you become atomized, right? You're constantly having to throw away relationships just all the time, over and over and over again. This is why it's more prevalent in older people, right? Because you're forced into this situation where, like, all your friends and your family are all dying, right? And, you know what I mean? Like, that's a natural process as a whole. You know what I mean? When you get older, like, people are going to die and you're going to lose people. But in today's society, it's much different than it used to be. It used to be where you would have, as your family would die, as your friends and the older people around you would die, you know what I mean? Your children would give you grandchildren and they would be around every day and it would bring joy to your life. And you wouldn't have to worry about, like, you know, you'd have something to kind of replace those relationships with because we all had like this multi-generational living and shit, right? You know what I'm saying? See, they think, right, as a whole, because like, you know, managers can only think in management terms because this is normal to them. This, this society is what it's supposed to be because GDP is going up, right? They think it's a severe problem. Right, because like yo, you have disposable income and you're just not handling it correctly, you know? You know what I mean? Right? <laughs> they're so they're so they're so trash, like legit. You know what I mean? Like, oh, it's because people are old, that's why. You know what I mean? That that's reason, you know what I mean? 
right? It can't be the fact that like you don't have your relationships you're supposed to have anymore because you don't have your community. You know what I mean? You don't have that multi-generational family where children are around and your kids are around and you have that like tight-knit group who love you. And we wonder why, you know what I'm saying, as a whole, our motherfucking like birth rate is fucking collapsing and shit, right? And I don't know if any of y'all like, you know, like I saw this one here earlier, right? This is not like the article I saw, but like, yeah, whatever, you know what I'm saying? The standing here trying to like bring up Japan's birth rate because it's down to like, you know, 0.72, <laughs> right? They say it's at 1.26, you know what I mean, which is... <laughs> lies right <laughs> it's like 0.72 right they have one of the lowest birth rates in the entire world right and what they want to do is and again this shows you like what their thinking is as a whole right they say we want to give out more money and even in this article right as a whole <coughs> You know what I'm saying? It says, you know what I mean? That like literally it hasn't, you know what I mean? Like fucking can Japan's new measure reverse its low fertility rate? As mentioned above, while Japan has dramatically increased social expenditures on family over the last few decades, the surge has not elicited a corresponding shift in total fertility rate. It's not working. It's it's not working. (sighs) Right? They've adopted an Anglo way of life. An Anglo way of life will make you rich. It's like a Jewish way of life will make you rich. But is that what you want? Is it sustainable for you? It's not. It's not for anybody. Right? It's like when they say, man, listen, we have all these teachers' pensions we have to pay. and We don't know what we're going to do to be able to make sure we had the money. I know what we'll do. We'll fire teachers. The ones who are contributing to the fucking pensions. Well, it'll save you some money that year. But you can only do it once. Because you still got to teach the fucking kids. Mm. Mm. So back to my car real quick, right? I got this car. It costs me money all the fucking time. And I refuse to get rid of it. Because I got the same car before this and I had to turn it back in. And I got this car again. Right, about three years ago. And it's just been a massive headache the entire time I've had it. But I keep fighting for it. Because unlike a woman, unlike other humans, it can't just leave me. It can't just run away. And if I work hard enough, I can keep that motherfucker running. This is kind of the point. It used to be everybody was your property, right? Not like your wife and kids. It's not like, you know, like, oh, you owned your woman. Ain't that. Your family was yours, right? And Godfather said, you can't lose your family. I say die, right? But again, you know what I mean? Like, yo, you're not supposed to be able to lose these people. They're supposed to be yours forever. And you're supposed to be theirs. No matter what happens. And that's just not the truth anymore. And we wonder why motherfuckers don't value children, wives, relationships the way they used to. Because we're atomized. Why do we all invest more in things than we do people? <laughs> Why do people care more about their pets than they do humans? Reality of life, son. Shit is super fucked up. But y'all look, I'm Tom Pizzo, Pino News, man. I hope y'all enjoyed this. I'm up out of here. Peace.